Next, we have Mr. Luke Herman. Hi, my name is Luke Herman, and I'm a senior here at Madison County High School, and I decided to do my presentation on eco-friendly architecture. So, um, at first, I had no clue what I wanted to do, and, uh, and then I remembered I like always seemed to love the show Tiny Houses. If anybody knows that show, I mean, it's a pretty good show. Um, it, uh, it basically kind of shrinks big houses and puts families in little homes that is about like maybe 500 square foot, like less than that even. And um, it makes them cut down on supplies and it really also cuts down on emissions. And I was like, well, if I think about that, I couldn't find anywhere to do a tiny house internship, but um, there is a way to do like eco-friendly. And the combination of those two, I always love designing things and I love the environment. So why not put them both together? And so I then came across this and this is the future Google headquarters, headquarters in Charleston. And it is being designed currently by a company. It's a Swedish company, so it's going to sound weird. It's called Bjarks. It's B-J-A-R-K-S. And um, they're currently designing this. And each one of these little overlays right here, that's all solar. So it is constantly taking in energy for it to power itself and all the surrounding buildings, including this and outside. Um, and the inside is kind of like a little like ecosystem. It has trees. It has vines, it has plants that bring fresh air to the community inside and the people inside when they're working. It provides grassy pathways and it's kind of like a cool, comfortable place to work and to relax. And so this was always like, this is what kind of got me in to my, um, to my question, which was, if this can be done for a building, what can be done for much larger communities? So my question is, does eco-friendly architecture positively affect communities? And throughout my research, I learned that materials and design are a huge, huge part of uh, eco-friendly architecture. The design, a little history for the design. Um, the Anasazi, which were of the Southwest, which were thought to be ancestors of Pueblo Indians, were actually um, were the first to kind of come up with an eco-friendly design for their communities. And they had a central heating system that would heat the entire community. And the way they designed their buildings, it was hallways and there, it was all open, less uh, building materials actually used. And it, heat, it heated everything. And that was what really kind of, uh, that was what I first came across in my research that it was like one thing could, cent the centralized heating could heat everything and it would cut down on materials used. So the materials, is less materials and you use uh, all natural materials. And of course, back then it was, it was used like red clay, I believe was the material used for their buildings. And so um, materials nowadays, they're like siding, plastic, brick, uh, wood, and all those like you can use less materials and the materials you use are a huge difference in the actual home and the emissions it produces. So you can use all natural materials, like you can design your own cabinets you can like make them out of wood. You can use compost toilets and even items in the home like microwaves, uh, dryer, washer, combos, whatever. Um, they, uh, if you buy newer items, that reduces emissions because the older items aren't like up to code or something like that. And they all, um, brand new items really cut down on emissions. So my internship, I interned at VMDO Architects in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, my mentor was Rob Winstead. And he gave me the opportunity, he's head principal there at VMDO. He gave me the opportunity to sit in with different employees every day I was there. And they were each part of a different section. So VMDO is split into K-12, just kindergarten through 12th grade, uh, higher ed, which is like colleges and much larger schools, and athletics and community, which is athletic buildings and big, huge community centers and stuff like that. And each day I sat in with somebody at K-12, higher ed and athletics and community. And they all told me about what they do there at their job. And most of the time it was us going through an old project they had built and going through their, their design booklet and um, what they do on the job if they're going to a construction site and if they boss around people or not. Um, but it was a really, it was really interesting to learn that 
you see these big booklets, construction booklets that are out on a job site, every single thing is um, noted. So say those windows, every single window pane, every single window handle, and even down to the screws in those windows are put into this booklet. That's why it's like that thick for a school of this size, say. And it was cool to see how all of that kind of came together and it, like they would make schools and giant athletic centers. And um, a, few, um, a few buildings that VMDO have done, they've done JPJ in Charlottesville. They've done multiple Clemson dining halls. They've done VCU Music Center. They did Liberty Music Center. So all very prominent buildings in college society. So, and I also got the opportunity to, uh, this is a picture of me designing my own little house on SketchUp. Uh, it wasn't near as good as what they could do, but they um, showed me how to use SketchUp there, and I got to design my own little house. And I think they have it 3D printed there. I'm not sure. I might have to go back and see. Um, but it was, it was crazy how hard that was to make, especially me learning this, like, learning it like the first day I was there and then they're like, oh, you can get started on a project. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I was doing that. So, um, and then you go and look at their designs and they have like s huge skyscrapers that they have designed on S SketchUp that are like 30 times the size of my small little house. And it, um, I don't know if this project has pushed me to want to be an architect, but it definitely has shown me that it's a lot more detailed than I thought. So that's a big thing. For my uh, community service, I partnered with uh, Benjamin Dillon, and we actually organized a race here in Madison County. And um, it was a 5K, and we got a pretty decent turnout, about 35 people. And we raised $655 for the cross-country course in Mesa. So uh, his half is going to the cross-country course, and my half is going to Mesa. And uh, here are a few pictures of race day, it was kind of cold, and a lot of people were walking, as you see, but we told them you can run or walk, we're not gonna force you to do anything. And we had a huge help from the community. We got so many donations of gift cards for raffle prizes, food. It, it was crazy, the support that you get in Madison. Um, and yeah, here's Mesa, and that's uh, emergency services in Madison. It's actually in the old Yoders now. And um, they basically provide services for people in need in Madison. And I was also able to donate, we had a leftover 10 cases of water that I was able to donate, which is crazy because we use like three or four at the race. And then, so future plans, um, I plan on attending James Madison University. Uh, go Dukes. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm gonna study, but I th honestly think this project has pushed me away from architecture because I realized that it's a lot more than just designing buildings and it I feel like it's a little bit too complicated but I mean it's it's an idea it definitely um, it definitely has shown me uh, different options that I have in college so advice um, really pick something you love uh, I knew that I was well I was interested in architecture but I never really knew much about it and as you can see it kind of pushed me away from it so now I know that I don't want to do that in college and um, honestly, uh, I know you might hear this, don't procrastinate, that's a, <laughs> that's a common one. Um, yeah, and what I learned about myself uh, is I pro procrastinate a lot. Um, I'm, I got so far behind, and also what I learned about myself, that I can push through it, and if you just keep, keep going at it, that you can, you can get through anything. Senior, senioritis is real. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, so, um, before I ask questions, uh, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak, and uh, I'm glad I got to share my experiences with you. Whoops, I didn't mean to click that. All right, so any questions? Oh, it absolutely positively affects communities. Um, it brings, it's a healthier lifestyle for the people living in the home and outside of the home, and it also brings communities together. 
because there's things called urban villages that actually like compact like a community into a smaller area, less square footage housing. And it provides like an area for communities to say, like live with each other. And they, they're all the, the people in the community all want more eco-friendly homes. So it brings them together into tight knit communities and it's very um, nature oriented. So it provides clean air for com their community and uh, surrounding communities and influ influencing other communities is a big thing with the urban villages. Um, I felt like I did, and I, I never really thought about it that way, that, like, uh, that's a possibility for me to, like, go that route rather than just what I focused on on my project. So, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? How does the uh, eco-friendly idea tie in with, say, in, in Europe, they tend to restore older buildings, yeah. where in the U.S. we tear down and mm -hmm. build new? Um, did you read any about that? Uh, I actually did is the restoring of buildings as long as like, cause a lot of the materials are outdated. So they need to bring in like new air conditioning, new, like basically everything appliances, if you want like an updated lifestyle, but some people like to keep the old and that isn't necessarily always the best, but there, Cause there's two sides. You can like keep the old uh, products that are inside the building, but you would have to like store AC and stuff like that if you wanted it working or you can get the newer appliances, which, um, which decrease electricity use by a certain percentage, but yeah. It was just a comment on mm -hmm. something you said. It struck me talk about how this project had uh, pushed your way more. It didn't seem too complicated. Mm -hmm. I guess what I wanted to say to you is that um, I'd say this to all of your fellow students that don't sell yourself short yeah. right there and achieve, you know, achieve many things and all you got to do is work for it and you get it. Maybe you'll achieve some things that you didn't think you could. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it has a, um, you can get a degree for architecture, but most jobs, um, it's, it's a newer, it's a newer uh, program that's been added, but, and most jobs are looking for uh, masters anyway. So like, what I, from what I've heard, it's um, going to probably most likely beneficial to go and get your masters in architecture after going to JMU. But at, at some other college, I don't think they offer masters at JMU for architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you see any examples of like, these VDMO, VDMO projects where they used one material instead of an alternative material precisely because of its ecological? Benefit? Um, most of the projects I looked at were the large scale, like school projects. I did speak with their sustainability director at one point, and she just kind of went through and like listed off different things that they were doing but she never really focused in on the materials but most of the time they were using like simple uh like more windows was a big thing that i saw with them and allow more light and less lighting like so less electricity usage and it'd be like one light for a room and like these huge span of windows that would cover the entire wall so that was i, I noticed that with they're actually they're um gonna be redesigning they're designing right now green county high school is getting a renovation and they're doing that and one side of the window facing their football field is just like a huge like huge just huge windows and they would put like one central light in like the cafeteria but that light would be uh kind of drowned out by all the sunlight coming in yeah did you learn anything about solar panel solar panel um i they didn't use i know with the one beginning picture they um that was like 
the Swedish company Bjarks is like a huge, like large scale architecture company and they do like all these crazy sorts of buildings. But the the local company in Charlottesville, they didn't they didn't really go as far as solar panels because they were like kinda they're kinda like small a lot smaller than the huge companies. Um, I've, I've heard of that, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, no, they didn't, they didn't really mention that when I was interning with them. Any more questions? All right. <laughs>